This is Joseph Banta with the Nashville Mobile Development User Group. I am, first I'm going to show my face a little bit. Okay, I'm, uh, we were having our uh, February 16th meeting, um, which is uh, our second session of the 2016 Android Study Group. And um, we're, we've all just gotten done eating and socializing. Now we're going to start into the presentation. And that's all. Yeah, who's all this stuff? Hangouts is pretty cool. Okay, uh, like I just said, I'm Joseph Banta. I work here at BMI. I'm a uh, programmer by day and a programmer by night. Uh, although I do a lot of different things at night than I do during the day, strangely. Uh, <clears throat> I do a lot of Android and database and server side stuff and just whatnot. Uh, if you don't know BMI, BMI is a performing rights organization. Uh, when music is played on the radio or in a venue, uh, BMI makes sure that the writer gets paid. It's different people to make sure that the performer gets paid for different situations or whatever. But BMI takes care of the care of the writers pr primarily, right? Yeah, so. especially Nielsen awesome stuff. Anything on TV. So uh, anyway, um, want to thank our sponsors. Uh, BMI, they've given us the food in the venue. Uh, actually, tonight, Google paid for the food. Uh, Plural site gives us uh, free, monthly, free monthly subscriptions. And actually, last month or last week, Ed, I think, pointed me to the text on the business cards that actually tell you how you can get it free if, you're, if you don't have a job or whatever. Um, and also, uh, let's see, BMI, Plural site, and Google, their sponsors. Google pays, is paying for this, for the food specifically. And um, we don't have a whole lot to raffle off. I have a little pedometer this week. Um, and it, it, like I said, it's, uh, our, our, our little prizes keep getting crappier and crappier. But you know, this is uh, something you can use to track your steps throughout the day. And it's a marvelous device. Pedometer, right? Pe excuse me, a pedometer, not a pedometer. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, looking forward, um, we've been talking about a bunch of different things. Uh, we're doing this study group right now. We don't always do study groups. Sometimes we usually we just have uh, like lecture presentations where somebody gets up and talks about what they're messing with or what their company does. Uh, we're talking about maybe extending the study group to more advanced study group, maybe doing something for uh, iOS or Apple like uh, an iOS app development lab or a Swift development lab. Uh, oh yeah, and uh, somebody's brought up Appium as a potential uh, subject for us, and it sounds sounds really cool if we can get the, the speaker for it. Um, if you're if you weren't here at the last meeting, was was anybody not here at the last meeting? Okay, then um, what we're doing here at this meetup is uh, for, for this series is we're going through our uh, Udacity. Android for Beginners cur curriculum, which is actually online for free. <clears throat> uh, I think I've actually got the link in here. It's not just udacity.com, it's something else. Um, I mean, it's, it's udacity.com slash some long sequence of paths. Um, basically, the target, target audience for the curriculum is anybody who wants to develop Android but hasn't. And it's not real advanced. Um, I mean, this curriculum, this, this series, we have a, a series of uh, steps that we go through, um, basically starting with building layouts. Last week we went through basically lesson one A. Uh, I didn't touch on lesson one B because we didn't have a lot of time for that. Uh, I figured this week I'm going to go through practice one, practice set one in here. Um, in addition, if anybody wants to raise a question for what they've encountered about while looking at lesson one, that's what we're here for. We're not here for me to stand up here and present. We're here for you guys to get your stuff worked out. So uh, I'll probably stop, like, I don't know, what time is it now? Probably stop at like 6.45 and just see if you guys want to talk about something specific because uh, really the study, study Jam series or the study group series is about getting you guys moving. And, you know, while maybe it's what you want to do to come here and listen to me talk, it's not really, you know, why I'm doing this. Uh, 
We'll probably skip one of the copyrights and all that for fun. I think I did it. I think Ed did it. Anybody else? Has anybody else done that yet? Copyright challenge? So, okay, so, so you. Oh, wait. I did one that was during the, uh, during the installation. <laughs> it, it probably is. That's probably it. Um, and lesson two is making the app interactive. The practice I do. I, I guess next week, next week will be on lesson two. And then following that, uh, practice it to, and then uh, next to last meeting will be on program, program, and the week after that will be on. Uh, we'll have like presentations, final projects. Uh, the way I envision it, we'll see if it works out. Is that uh, probably somewhere in here? You guys will probably start working on your final projects, and it's not. So it's nothing serious. Uh, the the target they point you towards is develop an app that informs your user of five things they need to know. I mean, it's not hard to do. You can make an app about surfing. You can make an app about um, how to make shellfish. Um, <coughs> coastal oriented things today. Uh, you can do that's the seagulls on the wall. You can do uh, an app on how to <coughs> repair a bicycle. Anyway, um, we'll, we'll get to that when we get to it. Uh, the, the point is, is that there it's a structured curriculum, but it's really simple. Because as we saw in last lesson one, um, they're going over XML and stuff like that. It's really simple. It's just to the concept. Uh, as I said, really simple requirements, computer and bang fingers, and Ed keeps pointing out, you know, if you discriminate against people with fingers without fingers, then you're really um, making it hard on people. But, well, that's what I put in there. So it's, if, you have to, if you don't have fingers, then get out. I'm, I'm a hater. I'm a, I'm a fingerless hater. You can do it. You can do it. <laughs> okay. Uh, lesson 1A was views. XML syntax. The XML visualizer. Uh, they went over the text view. An image view. And um, one big point they made, I mean, th th it seems like they made a really big point, at least in the tutorials. I, I don't think I got to it, was reviewing only the documentation. Uh, I said it once and I'll say it again. I, I will say it again. Uh, I don't really know if there, how many great programmers there are out there. There's a lot of good people, people that are good at web searching. That's that's what I can do. Um, when I when I need to figure something out, I just basically Google it, Google it, and it's, or I Yahoo it, or I Bing it, or whatever. Uh, how many how many people use Bing? Anybody? All right, we got one Bing user. Two two Bing users. Okay, good. Okay, second question. Does your company make you use Bing? <laughs> Are you people work? <laughs> Lesson 1B, view groups, bringing them together so that uh, basically you learn about how to assemble uh, views into a layout and, and lay, put them together so that you have more than one and you can uh, put one group, one view group or one container inside of another or beside or attach it or Make it adjacent with a relative layout. There was an apostrophe. There's a stray apostrophe. I, I can't believe how they got past it. There's one right, right by group groups. Wow, we just completely messing things up. Um, attribute inheritance. Uh, this kind of skims onto uh, the object-oriented nature of programming in Java. Uh, and one very powerful tool when you're building layouts is layout weight. Uh, if you don't get layout weight, you're gonna you're gonna get lost. It's because I mean, layout weight is really how you do a lot of cleaning up. Like if you if you ever have to design your layouts to be on more than one screen size, you have to take care of you, you have to assign at least one component to fill up the space, um, and that's that's what you do with layout weight. Okay, uh, so theoretically. People have gone through uh, lesson one at, before now. I mean, it's okay if you haven't because this, this is, you know, this is for auditors. It's for learning, whatever. But uh, the focus tonight, we're going to start on pra practice set one. And um, what I figured I'd do is I'll just play a couple of videos uh, from from the actual uh, from the actual um, content, but. A lot of it was just installing the JDK, the Java Development Kit, in Android Studio. So hopefully, um, I forgot. If, if that's practice set one, then maybe we'll just go on to lesson two because that's that's what I wanted people to do. I wanted people to get 
Android or get uh, Android Studio installed before tonight because that's you know it, it, it does itself even though it takes a lot of time. Is anyone not complete with that step? Does anyone still need to install Android Studio? Well, obviously people who weren't here last week, but um, I don't. so well. Uh, I mean, I'll step through it anyway, through the videos that are in there. But uh, in addition to installing the JDK in Android Studio, Practice Set consists of building a Hello World app. And that's, I'll, I'll go through that. Uh, tailoring the look and feel of each view and running the app on a phone or emulator. In my perspective, there's no substitute for having a real device or a few real devices to test on. I mean, you, you can't. You, you you have to use an emulator sometimes just because you want to see what it looks like on a, on a device you don't have. But anyway, uh, then uh, that goes into lesson two. Okay, so from there, let's see if we can find the videos. There they are. I'll set up the speaker. first practice set. After every lesson, you're going to have practice sets with me to review what you learned in the lesson and make some cool stuff. I'm doing four practice exercises to instill what you've learned so far. So first, you're going to install Android Studio, which is a program that professional developers use to make Android apps. Following that, you'll make your very first Android app and load it up on your phone. Once you're done with that, I'm going to walk you through how to make a simple birthday card application. Finally, you'll make your own custom card app and show other students your design process. Well, no time like the present to get started, so grab a cup of coffee and get to code. Okay, as I Ready mentioned, coded. as I mentioned, uh, they have pretty in-depth now we're gonna actually install our workshop guides on uh, how to install Android Studio, both for Windows and for Mac. I'm not gonna do that in here because that's you know everybody's got their own development environment they'd rather they prefer. Um, so, as I pointed out, there's a coffee break challenge. Well, that loading bar is going to take a while. Why don't we load some information to our heads while we're waiting for all that Android goodness to download onto our computer? It's going to follow as a series of quiz questions. Answer them correct, and you'll get a prize. The prize is amazing, right? That you get incredible. Yeah. Your what? Okay, you've got Android Studio up and running, awesome work. Now you're going to participate in an important programming tradition, making a Hello World app. This is the, basically the first step towards becoming an Android developer. I'm sorry, what? Oh. Maybe I should move this. <laughs> and at the end of the lesson, you're going to take this Hello World app and you're going to change it into the version. So you might be wondering what exactly is a Hello World program. Well, typically in programming languages, one of the easiest things you should do Sorry. is put out some words to the screen. So therefore, usually the first program that you'll make in a programming language is a program that will do exactly that, put some words out to the screen. It's kind of like when you're studying a new human language, how you learn words like thank you, or please, or excuse me, where's the bathroom, as sort of your first building blocks of that language. Okay, let's build the Hello World out. A quick tip before we get started. This video was recorded April 6, 2015. Now my suggestion to you is that you don't follow along with the video. Instead, go ahead and watch the video through once. After you're done with that, we provided some text instructions in the instructor notes. From time to time, Android Studio is updated, which means that many user screens can look a little bit different. And while the video might be out of date, the text instructions will be updated a lot more regularly. Okay. So if you close Android Studio, go ahead and reopen Android Studio. You should be there to this screen. I'm going to go ahead and click on this aptly named Start a New Android Studio Project button. 
All right, that should take you to this screen where we have a couple of different options. The first one is the application name. This is the name that you'll see in the app bar at the top of the app, as well as the all app screen of the device. Preemptively, I'm going to go ahead and name this Happy Birthday. OK, right below this, we have Company Domain. And if this looks similar to a web address, you're right. Normally, if you own the web address, you type it in here. Now, at one point in my life, I owned lilacujuara.com. So if I was making an app for myself instead of a demo app for all of you, I would go ahead and change it. I'm going to skip through some of this as, as it uh, gets a little verbose. But um, anybody wants me to slow down, just tell me. This package should be completely unique. Company domain, name with no space. If you are about cost, show there, and there'll be other people who know about you, the site name, and to the whole cloud. Again, that's the reverse. We'll be saved by the computer. Now, usually, Android Studio will create a folder for your Android Studio projects, and the default is to just put your app inside this folder. You can default it. It lets us pick what phones and devices that we're going to actually make our application for. Now, you're making an app for a phone and a tablet. And you're not going to make an app for TV, wear, or glass. So we're going to leave these all unchecked. The drop down right here shows us the version of the Android operating system that our application will support. I'm going to go ahead and scroll up. You can see that the first public and widely used release of Android was called Cupcake. With this release, Google started a convention where they would continue to go alphabetically, but they each operating system off of desserts or sugary treats. Cupcake was followed by Donut and Eclair. And this is why you'll see words like ice cream sandwich, honeycomb, and Kit Kat when you drop down there. Now below this drop down, you'll see this handy help me choose link. This graph shows some health percentages of how many people who have Android phones use the different operating system versions. Looking at it, we can see that most users, at least at the time of this recording, are using the deliciously named Kit Kat. The percentages show the percentage of people in the world using Google Play we'll be able to use our app if we pick one of these as our minimum supported version. So if you pick the newest version of the operating system, which is Lollipop, at least at the time of this recording, it's not only now. users with new phones would be able to download their app. And that would mean you'd only have about 0.1% of all of the phone users actually able to download your app. So you might be asking, why not make an app for all phones by picking the oldest version of the operating system? Here's a picture of the first commercially available Android phone, the T-Mobile G1 which is also known outside the United States as the HTC Dream. <coughs> it was released in 2008 and ran Android 1.0. Obviously, a lot has changed since then. For example, apps like Google Wallet, which let you pay for groceries with the weight of your smartphone, Not anymore. require a near-field communication. A near-field communication, or NFC, was actually a type of hardware that didn't make it into Android phones until 2010. So if you're making an app that requires NFC, there's no reason to even try supporting older phones like this that are running older so versions of the Android operating system. Anyway, for the purposes of your app, I want you to use API 15, which is Ice Cream Sandwich. This should work for about 90% of the phone users out there. All right, go ahead and click next. I want to interrupt here for an important update. Since filming the original video, the activity templates have actually been updated and changed. So your screens are going to look a little bit different than what you're seeing in the video right now. If you're using Android Studio version 1.4 or newer, you're going to see these screens instead. And instead of selecting blank activity, what I want you to do is select the empty activity template. This will generate the correct files that will allow you to follow along with the rest of the course. On this screen, you're given a bunch of starting templates you can choose from, depending on what you're trying to make. You're going to go ahead and choose blank activity, which is already selected, because it's the simplest one. And I'm going to click next. <coughs> Finally, this screen gives you the opportunity to name a couple of different files that are going to be automatically generated for your application. As you'll soon see, an application is composed of all the picture files, sound files, XML files, Java files, and more that are required to make the app. Basically, there are a lot of files that work together to make your application. We'll talk about this all soon. For now, take a look at the layout name. You've been working on XML layout files, so this is the name of the file we'll be editing in just a little bit. I'm actually not going to change any of these defaults. So you can go ahead and click Finish. Now, depending on your computer speed, it might take a moment to set everything up. If you look down here, you'll actually see a little loading circle, as well as a loading bar. And you can see a loading circle down here as well, meaning that it's continuing to think about things. So take a break, go ahead, stretch, and get some tea. Or, I mean, coffee. 
Okay. Um, did did anybody go through that and did they give them trouble? Because uh, the if you ever do get into Android development, that initial setup is always the same. You always pick the same uh, the same package name, the same. Uh, I mean, you always go the same sequence of picking a package name and uh, an app name and and all that and uh, targeting your uh, target SDK, your minimum SDK is a big deal. Um, usually going with the defaults is fine, like she said, but uh, that's, was there anybody that had trouble with that? Go on with it. When you start programming, you use the XML visualizer. The things you can do in the visualizer, you can also do the Android Studio. And a lot, lot, lot more. As such, Android Studio might look a little bit complicated. But to start making an application, you actually only need to know a few of the core functionality. So really don't worry if you don't know what every single button does. I still look things up, and I sure don't know what every single button in Android Studio does. Ed made a good point. Um, if you didn't, uh, if you were not here last week, I should have clarified how to get there. <clears throat> it's on, uh, <clears throat> it's on our meetup site. If you go to the event for today, you'll see I have a link. Excuse me, I just had a piece of hot chicken go down the wrong way. Uh, uh, okay, it's right there. Um, so, like I said, it's kind of a long URL, but uh, udacity.com slash course slash android dash development dash four dash beginners dash uda37. And uh, there it is. So, um, if you go to our, our meetup site and go to, to today's event, you'll see the link there. Um, otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and proceed. You're probably not going to be able to pull Android Studio on, on our Wi-Fi. Yeah, so. if you if you try to install Android Studio tonight, you can try, but work fine. All right then. Okay. Do you have the uh, password? Oh yeah, I got it. I want you to introduce this as being something similar to a document editor, such as Google Docs. In Google Docs, you open a file and you edit that file. In Android Studio, you open a project which contains many files. And you can edit any of the files within the project. If we go over here to the left hand side, we can see all the folders and files that are inside of our project. If I go over to the folder and click it, it shows me the subfolders. If I double click a file, it opens a tab for that file. Here's where you can edit the file. And the tabs across are for switching back and forth between different files. I'm going to go ahead and close this file that I just opened by clicking the little X up there. As you're editing things in Android Studio, it does the work of automatically saving your work. Now, if I do something really disastrous, like, whoops, I accidentally select all this and then delete it, always remember that you can undo and redo in Android Studio. I'm going to undo that by going up here to the menu bar and clicking Edit, Undo. And you can see right below it that we have Redo. Alternatively, if you don't want to use the menu bar, you can use the keyboard shortcut Control Z or a Max Command Z. And to redo, it's Command Shift Z or Control Shift Z. Let's take a closer look at the left hand side here. Everything here combined makes up your app. An app or an application on Android isn't a single file, it's a collection of images, layouts, and other code. Note that if you go up here, you can select a few different ways to view the files and folders of your app. Project, in particular, shows you what the folders actually look like on your computer. I'll click down a bit so that you can see. All right, not to scare you, but when you made your app, there was actually a ton of folders and files that were generated. To simplify things, I usually just stick with the Android view, which is a little easier to navigate. Now, back when you made your project, you chose where the project was going to be saved. If you ever forget, you can look up here at the menu bar, which reminds you where your project is saved. And if you're feeling particularly brave, you should feel free to even take a peek at what this folder structure actually looks like on your computer. For example, on a Mac machine, I can go to my home folder, as I go to Android Studio Project, and I see this happy birthday folder, 
And this contains all of the project activity main.xml file. So to XML that we were writing in the last include attributes that are specific to the development and making layouts. XML is also used with websites storing data and other applications. So we use this XML and as attribute to specify that we're interested particularly for Android development and particularly for layouts. The fact that we use the word Android here is also the reason that we put Android colon in front of all the attributes that we use. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about the XML and as attribute, you can check out the instructor notes. The important thing to know is when you make a new application, these two things will be automatically included, and you should include them in any other layouts you make. Otherwise, your application won't work. All right, now down here you're going to see two tabs, the design tab and the text tab. And the text tab is actually the tab that you're usually going to be working with. Over here on the far right, you'll see that there's a button that says preview. If you click on it, it'll remove the picture of the phone. If you click it on again, it'll bring the picture of the phone back. This is a preview of what your XML looks like on a phone. It's very similar to the XML visualizer. I'm actually going to go ahead and change the text attribute here to say goodbye world. Now if you do this on your own machine and you zoom in here, let me do it now, you should see that the text updated to say goodbye world. Pretty cool. If you click on the design tab, you'll see a drag and drop interface for designing phone layouts. So for example, I can drag things over into the application. Over here, in this area called Component Tree, it's going to list all of the different views that I have. If I click on a particular view, down here in Properties, it shows me all of the different attributes or properties that I can change. This list can be pretty helpful for discovering new layout properties. Also, if you right-click on any of these properties, such as this Align Start, it'll give you an option to see the documentation. This design view is pretty helpful if you're trying to quickly build a layout but you get a lot more control over exactly where different elements go if you understand and know how to write code. Since we don't really need any of these additional options and don't know what a lot of them do yet, it's easier to just stick with the text tab. That concludes a quick tour of Android Studio. Next, we'll work on running our first app. Right now, we see a picture. So I'm going to go ahead and let, her, let, let this uh, video go on. And it is uh, seven minutes long. Um, but before I do that, I wanted to ask, is there anything anybody in here specifically wanted to look at before we uh, just go ahead and roll down the pipe? Like, was there anything that gave anybody trouble that, that uh, would be nice to review in here? And if uh, you're afraid to speak up, that's okay. Just just do it. It's fine. Nobody's going to hurt you. All right. No, go ahead and go. Down the pipe. Yeah, you don't roll down a pipe, do you? You roll down a pike. Pardon my. But this isn't actually English. on a phone. This is pretty similar to when we were working with the XML visualizer. Now we actually want to see our app on our phone. To participate, you're going to need a USB cable like this. Now, this USB cable should fit your Android phone, which you will also need. What do I mean by fit? Well, I can pick up my phone and plug this cable into it. Now, if you don't have these things, there's a slightly more complicated way you can get up and running, which I'm going to talk about in the next video. But if you have both of these items, I really encourage you to use a real device. It's a lot more fun that way. All right. First things first. Your phone is not set up to let random code from your computer run on your phone by default. And this is key. So you're going to need to do a few steps to prep your phone. What she's okay. been talking about is, is uh, basically when your, your phone comes to you from your provider, <coughs> Uh, it's not by default going to want to allow you to debug. Uh, and these are the steps that uh, you do. They're, they're pretty simple steps, but still. Um, you, you have to do this if you actually want to run the software that you build on your own device. The first step is to become a developer. It sounds a little funny. When would you know when you're a developer? Well, what this actually means is changing around a couple of settings on the phone, which will allow you to access developer options. Once your phone's set up, you'll connect your phone to your computer using the USB cable that I talked about before. Now, if you're using a Windows machine, the third step for you, and Windows only, will be to install a driver. And a driver is an extra little bit of software that will allow your phone to communicate with your Windows machine. With Macs, this just works by default, so you don't have to worry about it. Look how many Macs are in here. And finally, you'll install your Macs. Apps. All right, let's start doing these steps. 
to non Macs. On newer phones running Android 4.2 and later, you need to tell your phone that you're a developer. This is a pretty simple process that I'll show you right now. The way to do this is to navigate to the settings menu. Once you're here, scroll down to the bottom and click on About Phone. On this menu, also scroll down to the bottom. You should see something that says Build Number. OK, so take the build number and click it seven times. Cool. That's, that seems a little strange, so now but that's really what you do. Just Excuse tap. Is, they, they acts like an Easter egg, like you're not supposed to do it, but just about everybody in the world knows about it. So did anybody not get that? You, do you understand? Uh, you just go, go into your screen, go into your setting screen, About Phone. Okay, so take the build number and click it seven times. And click on About Phone. And this, this might, your setting screen might look different depending on what version of Android you got. But it's, it's almost always the last setting on the bottom of your setting screen. Find that, About Phone. Here, scroll down to the bottom and click on About Phone. On this menu, also... Let me, let me. We'll scroll down to the bottom. You should see something that says build number. Okay, so take the build number and click it seven times. Get it worked out? Thank you. Cool. So now suddenly, you're a developer. Wasn't that easy? Once you're done, go ahead and hit the back button. Now because of your new fancy title as a developer, you should notice that the phone has provided you with a new option, the developer options. Go ahead and click on that. Okay, now in developer options, there's a bunch of fancy sounding options. But what I want you to do is scroll down until you see USB debugging. And then go ahead and click the little checkbox next to USB debugging to turn it on. And say OK. Anybody not get that? Say the last part again. Oh, in developer options, there's a bunch of fancy sounding options. But what I want you to do is scroll down until you see USB debugging. USB debugging in developer options. Clear? And then go ahead and click the little checkbox next to USB debugging to turn it on. And say OK. By checking this box, it's allowing your computer to put applications onto your phone. Awesome. Now that you've enabled that, you can take your handy dandy USB cable, plug one end into the phone, and take the other end and plug it into your computer. If you're on a Windows device, there's one more step to set up your phone and computer. Your Windows machine needs... Yeah, unfortunately, uh, developing on Windows is not as painless as it is, is it on Macs. And most of us are immune to this concern, but uh, have, you, have you done it before? Have you uh, downloaded a, a driver for your phone? It, it's not. I mean, if you Google for it, like, what kind of, what kind of, do you have a device, an Android device? So, uh, just go to your, go, go to the manufacturer's website. They'll have a driver, and you know, you'll you have to download and install it, and that, that's all there is to it. But uh, you know, did you get that? Yeah. Okay. Are you okay with it? I already did it. Good. Sorry, didn't mean to pick you out. I just uh. It's a software called. Don't worry, you get behind. Communicate with your phone. I'll start by downloading the driver. For most phones besides Google Nexus phones, you can navigate to the Android OEM, which stands for Original Equipment Manufacturers Driver Website. A link is provided in the instructor notes. What you need to do is something here that refers to your key some security messages from your computer. Another way of saying that, you can now install apps that you've built on your computer onto your and click it. It will take about 10 seconds or so for the next window to pop up, so be patient. At the sure. bottom of the screen, you should be able to that now the computer is So that sounds awesome, but from your computer. Finally, we're going to install our Hello World app from the computer onto the phone. To do this, you're going to go up to the top of Android Studio to this green play button and click it. It will take about 10 seconds or so for the next window to pop up, so be patient. At the bottom of the screen, you should be able to see that there's some process being executed. Now, if everything went as planned, your computer should detect your phone and list it here. Make sure you have the choose a running device radio button clicked and not the launch emulator radio button selected. 
If you can't see your phone, try unplugging it and replugging it in, and then try restarting the phone. If that also doesn't work and you're on a Windows machine, you might have installed the wrong driver. If none of those solutions seem to solve your problem, we've created a troubleshooting document which is linked in the instructor notes. And you can always try asking your fellow students for help on chat or in forums. Okay, but hopefully things are working. You can select your phone and click the OK button. After about five seconds, you should see your phone looks like this. You've now successfully run your first Android application on a phone. Awesome work. As we start thinking about our birthday card application, I want you to think about a friend who's having your birthday that's coming up. And my challenge to you is to change the app that we currently have to say happy birthday and then that person's name, and then to run that app on your phone. Remember, you'll need to change the mainactivity.xml code file the same way we practice changing code in the internet browser. Right now, the text says hello world, but you should be able to find the correct attribute to change it to say happy birthday and then your friend's name. After you've done that, press the green run button and install the app on your phone. Good luck. Okay, so that last practice question actually came in two parts. The first part was to go into activity. The next part was to actually run this layout folder. And then I see activity underscore main.xml. Double click to open it up. Okay, now I'm looking at a text view, child view, inside of a relative layout parent. Now it's the text view that I'm interested in. Okay, so I should ask myself, am I changing something in the relative layout, in the text view, or both? And the answer is I'm changing something in the text view. And then the question is, which attribute or attributes do I need to change? And to change around the text in the text view, that is the Android colon text attribute. So I'm going to go right here. I'm going to delete the current value, but of course leave the quotes. And then I'm going to type happy birthday Ben. All right, cool. So at this point, I've done the first part sure, of what I need to do, which is change around the activity sure, underscore main XML file. Now I need to run it on my phone. And that was a pretty simple process. I go up to the top here and over to the green play button, which will install the app on my phone. I press play, wait about five seconds. And at that point, this choose device window pops up. As I just showed you, I'm going to select my phone, and then I'm going to hit the OK button. And it's a little bit hard to see, but happy birthday bed appears on my phone. So you might be wondering, if you don't have a phone, what you can do? Well, Android Studio has actually provided a way for And by the way, uh, if you don't have a phone, uh, if you're going to be playing around with, with uh, Android, depending on your intensity level or whatever, I would definitely recommend just go to Walmart and buy a $50 phone. I mean, how much of your time is it worth to, 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 to waste starting up and shutting down an emulator? And sure, you got to do it sometimes, but you can get an Android phone, a good Android phone for 50 bucks. You can get a great Android phone for $100. Uh, like there's, I think there's a Galaxy S4 at, at the Walmart for $100, and that's a great phone. Um, and you don't have to get a provider for it, I mean, not a, a carrier for it. You can just use it on Wi-Fi or whatever. Um, and, you know, if you don't want to go to Walmart, you can probably find something on Craigslist if you're okay with that, or eBay for 20 or 30 or 40 bucks. Um, so, uh, I'm not going to go through all these instructions because it takes a lot of time, but I'm going to jump straight to uh, All right. Now we're going to take everything you've learned and make a simple birthday card app. <laughs> the app's going to look like this. It's a digital card that you can show and share with a friend or family member. Then, at the end of the practice set, you'll be making your own custom holiday card. So what I'm going to do for you right now is break down the process of turning a drawing like this into code. And this is going to take three easy steps. And when you're designing application layouts, these are good steps to follow if you're not sure how to get started. Okay, so step one is to take the layout and select the correct views to use. Step two is to then take those views and position them on the screen. And basically, you do step two by choosing the correct view group and then selecting the correct positioning attributes. Finally, we add all of the stylistic touches in step three. This is where we take the views and add things like color or font-related attributes. One thing you'll notice is that this card says, Happy Birthday, Ben, and from Lila. Now, your name probably isn't Lila, and maybe you don't have a friend named Ben, so you can feel free to change this text around as we go through the example. All right, so we're going to go ahead and jump right in. Let's start with step one, which is selecting the views. Given this application, what views do you think are included? 
Anybody want to answer that without looking at the screen? <laughs> Don't look at the screen. <laughs> yeah. Pretty simple. Okay, so I see some text here and I see some text here, which probably need positioned differently. So I think these are two the party picture, which is an image. So this right here, I'm going to label as an image view. Great, so you've actually finished step one. Now that we have these two text views and this image view, we should decide roughly how we're going to get them to the correct place on the screen. All right, so on to step two, positioning. When you're thinking about positioning, the first question you should always ask yourself is what view group you should use. Speaking of which, what view group should you use? You only know about two of them, so which is it? Linear layout or relative layout? Also, go ahead and back your opinion up with facts. Tell me why your choice is the best choice. In point of fact, you could do it with either. It's, it's kind of a trick question. I mean, I know what they're going for, uh, but some, somebody tell me what they would use on this. Relative layout or linear layout? Linear, why? Because they're all in a line. Okay. Actually, no, it's a future property. Well, well okay. Anybody else? <laughs> I, could, I could use relative, but I guess would, would you, if you wanted to use linear, would you be best? Like two? If you, if, you, if, you, if you wanted to have a linear layout and you wanted to have that image behind stuff, you'd have to have two linear layouts. You'd be, and you'd have to have something underneath them, like a frame layout or something else. Um, you could do it. Um, it's a lot easier to use one relative layout for this because you have one, the, the relative layout has the image that's in the background that takes up the, the entire uh, background. And then on top of that, also inside the relative layout, you have one text view up here and one text view down here. And up here and down here. And uh, it's, it's, that's the simplest way to do it is with the relative layout. Um, you can you can make it happen any way you want to with uh, different layouts. One thing I was curious about that I didn't look up online, but can you, can you take a, like a, you know I come from like a lot like CSS where you can basically tell you know the container if you will which it seems like the, the layouts are that yeah you know this is the background image of this container is is there an analog for that in uh, uh, in this Yes, there is. Yes, um, you actually would set um, in a layout. Let's see. I might have done it here. No, okay. Well, um, in, in Android, you can have, among other things, there's a background attribute to a, uh, uh, a layout or a layout group or even just a widget. Um, and this can be, in this case, it's a color. And it's a color literal, so I'm telling it I wanted black. I could have done the Android black thing too. Um, but in addition to using a solid color, you can also say an image or a shape or a gradient of, and, and, and you do that with a drawable, like, like you put things in the drawable uh, folder of the Android layout uh, uh, resources folder. Okay, then you just um, it a yeah, and you, you, and basically in the background attribute, start typing at drawable. And what's in my so splash background or rig? So that, that, that would set the uh, original, the, the, the uh, background to that splash background to rig. I didn't do that initially because I wanted to have uh, a, a blended alpha level on the, on the image. And to do that, well, it, it, I, wanted, I actually put an animation in there, um, which is something we can get to later. Okay. So, that, so that's, the, that's the advantage of, of using the image view on top. But if, if you don't intend to, yeah, it is definitely quicker just to so so actually to your point and to Sue's for that one layout 
you could have one linear layout that uh, did a, did a wrap a, a match match parent on its uh, width and height, and then um, you set these two guys to to, to each have a gravity. Uh, this this guy a gravity of uh, top and this guy a gravity at bottom, and that way you'd fill up the whole container with uh, with the views. I mean, obviously I could I could show you on the screen, but it'd take a little bit longer than I want to give to this. Uh, so yeah, you could do that with a linear layout with one linear layout by just setting the background. To answer this question, let's compare the two so that you can choose. Linear layouts are great for aligning these in rows or columns. They're a good way to divide up one space using layout weights that will expand or shrink views depending on the size of the display. On the other hand, relative layouts are great for positioning elements relative to one another. For example, putting B below A or putting C in the lower left-hand corner. Relative layouts also make it easy to overlap views. For example, here, view A is overlapping view B. For our card, we don't really have a line of horizontal or vertical views. And as you can see, some of these views overlap. So in this case, a relative layout makes a lot more sense. And with a relative layout, I can use specific attributes to position these two text views. Instead of talking about all that here, though, you'll tell me what to do in the next few questions. OK, so at this point, we've got our drawing or layout. We've identified the views, and we've started our thoughts on positioning by picking a relative layout as our view group. This is a great time to start coding. OK, so what I have open here is the code that we were working on before, which is activity underscore main dot XML, located in the layout folder. Now, as far as creating the views, we already have about half of the work done. We have a relative layout, and we have one text view that says happy birthday, Ben. To get all the views you need, you're going to want to make an image view. You're also going to want to make one additional text view. Adding the additional text view should be pretty easy. The image view requires a little bit more work because you actually need that Android party picture. In the instructor notes, we've included a link to that picture so that you can download it. OK, so I've downloaded the picture, and I've saved it to my desktop. It's saved as androidparty.jpg. Now, you might recall before, when we added images to our XML, we said that we'd save them in a folder on the computer called the drawable folder. Also remember how our app has a bunch of files and folders associated with it, which we can see in the directory structure on the left. These include layouts, pictures, sometimes music, and so on. A lot of these types of files are going to be housed in the res directory, which is short for resources. The res directory contains subdirectories for all the image, text, layout, and other resources the app might need. And as we said, for images, there's this folder called drawable. For this app, all images should be placed inside of the drawable folder. Once you put the image into the drawable folder, you can use the source attribute of an image view and give it the value at drawable and then the name of the image. No, when you're writing the image name, you do not need to add the file extension. OK, so now I'm going to show you how to actually put a picture into the drawable folder. OK, this image is in the instructor notes, so go ahead and download it to your desktop. Next, I want you to open Android Studio. In Android Studio, you can go over here and right-click the Drawable folder. From there, you should see something that says Reveal in Finder or Reveal in Explorer. Here, I can see the Drawable folder. So right now, I'm going to move the Android Party.jpg into the Drawable folder. And I'm just going to do that by dragging it over. OK, so make sure you're starting with the correct XML code. And if you don't have the correct code, you can go ahead and copy and paste it from the instructor notes. All right, first things first, download androidparty.jpg. Then take androidparty.jpg and move it to the drawable folder. Once that's done, go ahead and add the text view that says from and then your name. And after that, add the image view with the source attribute as androidparty. There's actually a lot of default padding in the code that you're working with, so you could go ahead and delete that. What do I mean by default padding? Well, it's this padding bottom, padding left, padding right, and padding top. You can go ahead. and just delete it. Finally, click the green arrow to run the app on your phone. When you finish all of these steps, your app should look like this. Note, it's a little bit hard to see on this screen, but the text views are actually overlapping. That's completely normal and something that we're going to deal with next. 
<clears throat> okay, now, in the interest of time, I'm going to skip through a couple of these because uh, you're going to have to go through this yourself anyway. Um, I'm not, I've, already, I've already done all this stuff and I've already downloaded the views and all that. Um, and you'll need to do that to get this figured out. All right positioning. So this is what we have right now. And like I said before, for the most part, things are in the right place. The image seems to be pretty much centered in the screen. Happy birthday is in the upper left corner. Really, the only thing that's an issue is that from Lila is not in the correct place. It should be in the lower right-hand corner. You can see here at our goal, we've managed to move it down here. So let's go ahead and fix this and turn it into this. To start, select the attribute or attributes that you need to position from Lila in the correct place on the screen, namely the lower left-hand corner. Here's a list of attributes, and you can go ahead and check next to the ones that you think you need. Once you've done that, submit your answer to see if it's correct. Once you know the correct attributes to use, open up your code and go ahead and add those attributes to the From Lila text. So does anybody, uh, what do you guys think? Um, the attributes that you need to position From Lila. Um, I mean, I don't know if I, if I had to stop and spend time on this, but we got Happy Birthday Ben and From Lila. And I think they want from Lila down here. So to do that, what are you going to change? Yeah. Um, basically, uh, I said layout width and not layout height because always you got to set those no matter what. And you want to you want to set it to a line parent right and a line parent bottom. And these are attributes that are uh, inherent to the uh, relative layout component. Um, and relative layout has a lot of uh, inherent proprietary attributes that you have to figure out in order to use it. It basically deserves a book to itself because it's so complicated. But it's, it's it also very powerful and, and uh, very um, versatile. So I guess it's going. Okay, so let's look at the solution. If you said either layout width or layout height, those wouldn't be bad guesses. It's really important to choose these values carefully as they affect the space that your element takes up. For example, let's talk about layout width. Suppose that I have a text box that says hi, and I set the layout width to be wrap content. By default, this will just stick that text box into the upper left-hand corner. Then, if I use another attribute to push it over to the right, the text box will be here. If instead I use match parent, by default, hi will still be in the upper left-hand corner. But if I then try to set an attribute to push it to the right, it'll try to push this text box to the right, but it already is as far right as it can be because it's expanded to match the parent and fill the whole view group. In the case of using match parent, we can see that the high text hasn't actually moved. So one thing that's hopefully clear from this example is that we're going to want to set both layout width and layout height to wrap content. So it wraps exactly around the content, and then when you tell the text view to be either to the right, left, above, below, it will actually move that text to that location. OK, so both layout width and layout height are important. Text style is an attribute for bolding or italicizing text, and it really doesn't involve positioning or spacing. Orientation is an attribute used specifically with linear layouts to determine whether they're going to be vertical or horizontal. Because we're using a relative layout, this also doesn't make any sense. Layout weight is really useful for spacing out elements evenly, but again, this is a linear layout attribute, which leaves us with these attributes. All of these attributes have to do with relative layouts. Now, these attributes, layout to right of and layout below, are categorically different than the layout aligned parent, either bottom left or right. These attributes take two child views and position them relative to one another. For example, we could say position from Lila to the right of and below the Happy Birthday Ben text view. Let's see what that would look like. OK, so if we did that and we just looked at the two text views, this is the code that we would use. With the Happy Birthday Ben text view, I've created an ID here. And then I refer to that ID for the From Lila text view with the layout below and layout right of attributes. Here's a picture of what that actually looks like in the app. And unfortunately, that didn't really do what we wanted. The From Lila view is, in fact, to the right of the Happy Birthday Ben text view. And it is also below, but it's not in the lower right-hand corner. So these two aren't correct. 
Okay, so that leaves us with these three attributes, which will take my text view and align them in relation to the parent, which happens to be the whole screen. Now, I want from Lila to be down here, which is in the lower right-hand corner of the parent. So I'm not going to be using layout align parent left. So in fact, I'll be using layout align parent right and layout align parent bottom. Let's see how this all comes together in the code. Okay, so first things first. I'm going to find the from Lila text view, and I'm going to make sure that the layout width and the layout height are both set to wrap content. Otherwise, even if we position our text view correctly, it might not actually move. Next, I'm going to add the additional attributes. For the value, I go ahead and put true. This is affirming that I want this text view to be aligned to the parent's right. The other value I could put here is false, but that would mean that it is false that it aligns to the parent right, which is not what I want. So now I'm going to type the other attribute to put at the bottom, and I will also set this to true. All right, so for those of you at home, this might be a little bit hard to see, but it seems like we positioned our view down here correctly. That said, let's see if it actually shows up correctly on the phone by pressing the green run button. Okay, I select my phone, I click OK. OK, awesome. So up here, I have my happy birthday, Ben, and down here, I have from Lila. And with that, everything looks like it's pretty much in the correct position. You are blazing through these steps. So at this point, we've done step number one, where we've selected the correct views. We also went ahead and did step number two, and we roughly positioned the views correctly on the screen. Try to figure out what the differences between these two states are, and then write those differences down in a list in this text box. This will help us choose what attributes we're ultimately going to change. Okay, so uh, looking at these two layouts, uh, what do you see is different? In obviously the images are different sizes. Um, this text is a different size on this on this screen on this layout than it is on this one, and uh, it's a different color as well. Same same here. Okay, as I'm comparing what we have now and our final goal, I see a number of differences. The first of these differences is that the text of the goal is much larger than what we have right now. Also, the final font that we're using is different from the font that we're starting out with here. Similarly, the text here is black and the text here is white. Now, if we take a look at the image here versus the image of the goal screen, we also see that the image has actually expanded to fill the entire screen of the phone. Now, this last one is a little bit more subtle. If you look over here at the text that we have right now, it's smushed right up against the corner of the screen. Whereas the text of the goal has this space here between the side of the screen and the text itself. And those were all the differences that I saw. So let's go ahead and work through these one by one, adding attributes and setting them to values, which will turn this into this. Listing out those differences gives us a good starting point. From those, I can make a to-do list of what I need to change. So now you're going to go through each one of these and slowly transform this into the final goal. We'll start with this first step, which is making the text larger. And here's the app once you're done coding. At each step, make sure to run the app on your phone so that you know that it looks good on a real device. All right, let's get started. All right, now let's go ahead and change the text to, the to white. Last one. All right, as before, select the attribute or attributes. Funny. Namely, you've got a white back to see your text. Don't worry, we'll fix that in the next video. So, uh, okay, I mean, you guys will go through this yourselves this you weekend, hopefully at home. <clears throat> now, just as a little bit of a reminder of what this value is, we use at Android colon color to get access to the standard Android colors, and then forward slash white specifies that we're looking to use Android's white color. Really, there aren't a lot of standard Android options. If you want a specific color, it's a lot easier to use a hex code like we talked about in the lesson. A good resource for hex codes is the Material Design Color webpage from the Android Developer website. That webpage is linked to these sharper notes if you'd like to take a look at it. But enough about color, we're using Android's white, and let's go over to Android Studio to take a look at what that looks like. All right, we're back at our trusty old activity main.xml, and you're probably used to adding attributes right now, so I'm going to just go ahead and start typing in the happy birthday bed text view. Again, the attribute I'm using is text color. All right. And the drop down actually gives you some options. It's so she said the text size, color, the font family, and the text color to make this text this big. White. 
in and almost different color. My preview updates, and it's white, so it's kind of hard to see. But again, that's what we wanted it to do. All right, let's do the same thing to the other text view. I'm going to click here. Android text color equal to quotations, so important, important quotations at Android colon slash color. And once I've finished typing this, I can see that, well, this text view disappears as well. Again, expected because it's a white text on a white background. But I can see for the view outline here and here that the text does in fact still exist. And for the sake of thoroughness, let's go ahead and run it on our phones. Okay, now those of you viewing at home might find it a little bit hard to see, but I can just barely see my white text on my light gray background. So it looks like we did a good job. That's one more off our list. Let's move on to the next step. All right, so as I mentioned, this white text here is a little bit hard to see. But that's going to be fixed in this next step where we're going to expand the image view so that it fills the entire screen, and then we'll be able to see our white text just fine. OK, this quiz is going to be a little bit different. So like before, I want you to select the attribute or attributes that you think you need to use to expand the image like this. But don't worry about changing them just yet. Just go ahead and pick which one you think it is. You don't have to modify the code for this quiz. OK, uh, this one, unless you know the, the behavior of uh, Android and its layout with images, it might not be intuitive to do this. But what, they, what this image actually is, it's the same one, same, same image as this one, but it's expanded to fill the entire screen without actually, uh, without squishing it on the horizontal. So it's cut off the sides of it in order to make it fill the vertical uh, height of the screen. And that is, uh, you accomplish that by setting the scale type attribute to a value of uh, sitter crop. Um, and that's, that's just a, a trick you have to know. For the longest time, I didn't know that trick, and I just would play around with setting the image type and then setting its translation to you know negative x equals 53 or something like that, and it, just because I didn't know. Um, but really, it, it, it helps to know the tricks, because you know, if, if they're in your toolbox, you, you should use, use the tools. Um, so, question. Yeah. Is there, uh, what is the common code for this? For, uh, on the, uh, if there's like a line that I want to take scale type out, um, comment the line code? Yeah, it's not, it's not forward slash, forward slash. Well, okay. Forward slash? Yeah, yeah, forward slash. Is it control slash? I actually don't know. Oh, okay, because so it throws in that. I, I had no idea. I usually just type that stuff. Thank you. The uh, command slash on a Mac. How do you get it? How do you get it for breaking the syntax? Like, say if you comment out the Android orientation, now you can clear on the belt layout tag. Yeah, it breaks everything else. Yeah, I think, I think what you have to do. Okay, let's let's say command slash, command slash, and then control. You can do a whole block too if you do um, control shift. And then put it up here. Like that's what I would do. I would. I mean, if I wanted to keep keep a hold of it without breaking the syntax, just comment it out and then move it up or down below the definition of the tag. Oh, okay. okay. Um, the, there's there's probably probably is a way. I don't know. I mean, you can see I've done it here and I've done it here. Just, oh, I didn't. I just did this, but um, that's that's what I do when I basically want to bookmark a, a commented out thing. I put it between the or b before the actual uh, tag. tag. Yeah. So you know, everybody's got their own little quirks. That's what I do. We're already displaying the correct image, which is this Android Party image. The view to expand. Okay, like I said, screen, it's scale type. Screen. And that's what I want you to figure out in the next question. All right, so at this point, we know we're going to use scale type to expand our image. Things that we know about are center and center crop. 
knowing what you know from the lesson, which one of these do you think we should use? Now, once you use scale type properly to make the image expand to the entire screen, there's a possibility that your text will disappear. If this happens to you, try changing around the ordering of your views. What she was talking about is the, the, dev, the definition of the views, uh, she kind of skimmed over it. The, de the, the uh, order in which you include the views in your layout defines the Z order, which one's on top. So because this one's first, it's on the bottom. This, this right here, this image view is on the bottom of this layout. And this image view, if it overlapped, would be on top of this one. Exactly. Okay, if you got it, great job. And if you did, good try and keep watching for the answer. All right, so here I am in Android Studio. And I'm looking at the text views right now, but I'm gonna scroll up to look at the image view. Okay, so a little bit about what I was talking about before. If I put my cursor somewhere in this image view, it's gonna give me a blue box that shows me how big the image view is. And it's pretty much the entire size of this phone screen. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add scale type. And the two options that I'm looking at are center or center crop. Now center doesn't actually scale the image. 